All right, everybody, welcome to another True Fire live stream. I am your host today, True Fire artist, UA artist. UA means universal audio. In my opinion, they do things better than anyone in the recording world and in the guitar recording world. And we're going to talk to a couple of illustrious members of their teams uh, here today in this live stream. We're going to we're going to talk about creating and capturing world class guitar tone with none other than Universal Audio. And I humbly announce two of our illustrious guests, Mr. James Santiago, there in the bottom corner, top corner, and uh, Tor Morganson, coming to, us, coming to us from a long ways away. Tor, where are you coming from? I'm from uh, Denmark, so it's a little later over here. It's a little bit later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got you up and we, we pulled you into this live stream because we want to really tap into the knowledge that you have about not only being a great guitar player, coming up with great guitar tones, but how you create them for a company like Universal Audio. And James, you're in Los Angeles, correct? Yes, uh, San Fernando Valley, known for a few things in the entertainment industry. But today is all about guitar. <laughs> right, just a few. Just a few. Uh, so we have um, James is a senior, senior product designer at Universal Audio and Tor is a senior guitar product manager. So, you know, folks watching this and those of you that are watching the archive broadcast at some point, we pulled these guys out of the lair. OK, this doesn't happen very often. <laughs> so this is a treat. You know, if you're with us live, uh, ask your questions. We're going to get to them shortly. But really, first of all, what we want to talk about is how cool Truefire has made it to partner with a company like Universal Audio for their DIY July month in promotion where um, they're giving some Universal Audio gear away. They're giving away an ox. They're giving away a couple twin X's. They're giving an Apollo X8P away. And you can enter to win that stuff in what they call the prize pool. Uh, you can also get some extra entries when you um, go to check in at truefire.com and you watch uh, while you're watching uh, uh, this live broadcast. So um, rumor has it you get a bunch of entries when you go and you click the prize pool. That's really cool. This stuff is um, the, some of the greatest gear on the planet. Uh, we're going to dive deep into how these guys uh, not only create the gear but use it themselves. And then a little bit later in the broadcast, we'll have Tom Waterman from Universal Audio talk about how to craft guitar tones in their new groundbreaking recording system called Luna. So it's going to be a fun 45 minutes or so for sure. Uh, I am definitely uh, humbled by the presence of these fine gentlemen and what they uh, what they make and allow me to use on a daily basis. So, without further ado, shall we uh, shall we jump into some questions, gentlemen? You are you, are you ready? Are you primed? Yeah. 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 All right. So, now not all of us can have a sexy tiger stripe Jackson Kelly. <laughs> 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 James got some crazy guitars. I've collected a handful for sure. Um, I really want to tell the public and the folks watching this uh, what your background is briefly. You know, um, I know that you both had some not only f your feet in music and playing guitar for your entire lives, but you worked at some really, really great places, too. Uh, and you've developed some other great products that probably a lot of us have used. So, um, James, if you wouldn't mind, talk a little bit about uh, the early days of not only your guitar playing and tone seeking, but how that how that worked into working at some of the, the companies you've been involved with. Yeah, it's it's really not a straight line. I think anyone who plays music for a living realizes to be in this business, it's not just get in band, buy guitars, get famous, retire. It's not a straight line. There's all these things that go, you know, you learn skills that you didn't think would come in handy, like knowing how to read a contract or, you know, <laughs> fun, fun stuff like that. But uh, so oddly enough, my, my foreign to ray into working guitar uh, stuff was as a really young kid. I started when I was five actually playing guitar and was in, in working bands at 15, which if anyone knows the, the laws in California, you know, I shouldn't have been in those bars playing at that age. Um, but it gave me a Back then though, were you, were you pass? <laughs> early and, you know, you know, I was in there playing and you learned know, top 40 gigs and that, that at that time, in the heyday of the 80s, tones were moving from just 70s rock sounds to 80s where things started to have post effects. Things were getting, like to play a top 40 band back then, you had to not only sound like Leonard Skinner, you needed to sound like Steve Lukather. And you needed to, well, and this had to happen back to back to back to back for all of those hits back then. So it, that kind of got me when I go, why don't I sound like that? 
So I started very young and reading Guitar Player, which was really the only source of information back at that period. There was no internet. You know, it's, it's scary to think about. You couldn't just go to a computer and type how to sound like John Fruchante, how to sound like George Benson, how to sound like Jimi Hendrix. Um, so that, that actually connects me to uh, a point where uh, in my late teens, I was just playing every night and uh, started playing locally around the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, California. And a bunch of guys from Guitar Player used to come to the bars I used to play at. So event, I actually got a gig at Guitar Player testing gear as a teenager. Wow. Because how I spent years learning how to play everybody's style. Yeah. They're like, hey, they're like, can you, can you play like well, Steve I and play like George Benson and play like Stevie? I'm like, well, yeah, that's what I do every night. Wow. I, I think, and Corey, you probably realize this, you know, when you're broke and want to play music, you take every gig you can. You say no to nothing. <laughs> Unless you're double. So you, I took Motown, you know, gig, R&B gigs, country gigs. Uh, every gig, I just said yes to, and I'd go learn the material. And, and it's, it's, yeah, it's super fun, too. It is fun. It, after the fact that, you know, at the time, you know, you're driving to the gig, learning the songs when you get, you know, you know that feeling. But but that, that I was curious. So that's kind of where it began for me. So to sit there and have companies sending their newest gear and going, hey, here's a room full of gear. Can you sit there and test it all and figure out what it's good at? Oh, I was in hog heaven. Oh, you man, know? that's amazing. I won't tell you that. That's a long time ago, but that's how it started. It's starting to go to NAMM shows, yeah. the manufacturers, asking tone questions. Hey, why did you design this? And, and then I kept playing and recording and working for a guitar player. And to the point where I'm going to skip a decades after that, but at some point by the late 90s, Line 6 had actually approached me to like, Hey, you seem to know everybody's tones and the history of tones and how to play it all and can read music and do all this transcription stuff. Can't you just do that for us full time? And we'll move you to LA, we'll set you up, and you just keep guitar nerding out. Uh, and that was through a friend that actually, a friend named George Trips, who was Mr. Way Huge. Right, right. He had called me up after I just got married. He's like, hey, man, you want to move to LA? <sighs> Dude, I just bought a house in the Bay Area. <laughs> it's really pretty stable. And but no, that, that, that's kind of where it started. So that was definitely the breaking point for me where I stopped taking sessions and playing on the road as I was doing fly dates on the weekends and trying to do reviews for guitar player mm -hmm. and do design work. So I started working for people as a tester, like DiMarzio pickups, pedal companies. Just, I would just start turning in consultation stuff. And, wow. Yeah, but that was a long time ago already. So, but you have to, you have to want to find out why something sounds like that. It's like the old thing where you... You know, if you see a light switch, you just turn it on, great, it's on, but I don't know why it turned on, where the power from, how much power is it? So, but I think any guitar player has that internal curiosity. Um, and I will point to something really quick. A saxophone or a horn, you, you blow through it, it sounds what it sounds like in the room. A guitar, we have a thousand options. Yeah. We, all, we all still sound like ourselves, but how do we sound better? Is there some magical piece of gear that's going to make me sound better? And I like to think there is, because that's what I get up in the morning. Wow. It's a quick version. There's a ton of gigs between that, but that's that's how it started and kind of get awesome. you know. So it was literally curiosity, you know, and and necessity at the same kind of more merging in a lot of ways. You know, you had the gigs, and then you also had a just curiosity of everybody's type of tone because George Benson playing, you know, flat wounds is much different than Stevie Ray Vaughan playing through a dumble. You know, what I mean, like, and and they have a lot of different. You, you have to play those pieces of gear differently, much less the music, you know? So there's a lot. You're absolutely nailing it. And it's exactly why all of our little windows here, why Tor's room, your room, and my room has multiple guitars. They're probably all strung a little differently, different gauges, different height of action, yeah. different pickups, because yeah. it you play different, you know? So I'm not trying to, sometimes it's not about playing just like Steve Ray, but you can pick up a vibe and it makes you play differently. Absolutely. And then I'll come back to sound too. So that that's I think that's the fun part we're gonna hopefully get to some conclusion on is you know, there's no bad tone. It's just how do we use this to get something out of us that we couldn't do before. Oh yeah, I love that. Tor, if you can piggyback on that and talk a little bit about, you know, how you've gotten to this point. Um, because I, I'm still learning about what you do and, and we've only known each other for a short time. So uh this is educational for me too. Oh cool. Yeah. So I my background is a little bit different than James's. I, you know, I, you know, I started a little later when I was around twelve, something like that, playing guitar. 
my parents are old hippies, so we had like every Beatles album, every Stones album, and I was totally into that stuff. That and jazz, my dad's a jazz bass player. Um, so I was just, that's what I was playing back in the day. Um, and I used to visit my uncle, who's a jazz guitar player in Copenhagen. And one day I was kind of browsing through albums in, in a Copenhagen record store, and I came across this crazy look. I, at that point, I'd never heard Van Halen. I'd never heard, like, Satriani. I'd never heard any of those guys. I had no right. idea that they even existed. To me, like, the editor of great guitar was, you know, Jimi Hendrix. And I came across this weird album called with this guy with a seven string swirly guitar on the front and like all this weird stuff going on. I was like, that looks interesting. I'll buy it. And I put it, put it on when I came back home and my mind just went like, what the hell? <laughs> I was, I heard nothing like it because I've never heard the steps between, you know, Jimmy Hendrix and Steve Vai, which is, it was passion and warfare. And it just blew my mind. I, I was like, I need to learn this. And then I started getting pretty serious about it um, and got, well, I want to say decent, never amazing, but I got pretty decent at doing all this, you know, more of that shreddy kind of stuff to the point where I, I got an offer after playing some, you know, more 40, you know, top 40 style cover band stuff. I got an offer to join this metal band, death metal, which I've never really listened to before all that much um to join them because i could do all the shreddy shreddy things and it was a pretty big band at least you know for that genre so we toured europe a lot did a bunch of albums um and that was a hell of a lot of fun hence all these yeah know, tasteless guitars in the background um but at some point i realized that um you know you're not you're not gonna be you're not gonna make a living especially not you can make a living of music but probably not of playing death metal <laughs> So I was like, you know, the city I live in in Denmark just happened to be the city where uh, another gear company, TC Electronic, is uh, is based out of. And I think any musician in my hometown that sort of comes to this realization that they're not going to make it as a professional musician, they apply for a job there. And I did the same thing. And I was lucky enough to, to get a job there. Um, working actually as a web developer for the first four or five years and then basically getting the same job there as and I have at UA, which is product uh, manager um, and helping uh, basically make a range of, of guitar products for TC. Some of the guys out there might know Polytune or the Tone Print Pedals or Diddle Loop, but that's all products that I've done for TC. I mean... I don't, it's rare to see somebody without a TC product on their board these days, you know, Hall of Fame, Reverb, or Polytune, or, or um, you know, Flashback, Delay, all that kind of stuff, you know, so um, that, that's, that's pretty impressive, and you, you can see if you're uh, somebody who really nerds out on guitar gear, the arc of TC definitely changed over your time there, as, as far as I could tell. I mean, for me, it was just the chorus pedal for years, that was like the big thing, you know, and then it was like, yeah. oh, back in the game you know yeah. sort of a thing for sure you know but one of the things that i find interesting the more i talk to james is how much uh mojo is attached to the golden age of guitar recording which is what really is is uh kind of kind of marries in the ua relationship obviously because not only do we want to capture your guitar sound we want to do it in a way that is that is solely like UA's thing and really ultimately helps you, the player, get it out of your amplifier and your hands the best way possible. So James, can you dispel some of the myths or, or tell a story or two about how really the tones that we know and love are created and what you've done uh, via create, helping to create Ox, uh, help people achieve, you know, marrying all those things? Yeah. Um... And it might help to have some background on just the, the two minute why UA jumped into this. Uh, and I think it stems from the guy who started UA, which is Bill Putnam Sr. And if you look at his history, his whole point uh, of starting these businesses was to refine the recording process. You know, he, was des he had moved to LA knowing this is the hub of recording and started designing the rooms and then started designing consoles and compressors to refine the recording process to make everything sound better. So I think that same drive to get things to sound great, to be easier to use, to make better music, 
uh, it's the same thing we we work on daily at UA is is it well is it innovative is it creative is it going to make you want to play your instrument or sing a better vocal take or get a better drum sound so we're tasked with this this mantra of creativity and innovation and it's a great place to work so I think starting from that I think anyone who picks up a guitar like if we just take Van Halen for instance you know he he had it felt like he had no baggage when he went into the studio. He didn't feel like he's, a, I need to sound like Clapton, which he says was his biggest influence. I don't hear it, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, and he didn't sound like Hendrix either. And, and and he used the gear he had there to create something new in the same way the Edge does. And that's what we need are those curveballs in music to go, when you put on a root and go, how did they do that with, with the same guitar that I have? I can't make it sound like that. And it's even scary when you think the same Marshall likely is the same one, the same year and and circuit is on the same Hendrix record that's on the same Van Halen record, and those two things sound nothing alike. So there's this like what other mojo is there? Well, there's the gear they use in front of the amp. There's also how it was recorded and the way they treated the signal path. So that that was probably some of the harder stuff with guitar was you can have the same amp, but even past the settings like what. What were the one or two pedals? What was the microphone? What room was it in? Did they put a reverb post? You know, because we all know too, you can't just walk up to a Marshall and sound like Van Halen 1. It's impossible to do that in the room, to be quite honest. You you have to have that amp on 10 in a room that can handle that kind of volume. <laughs> microphones that can then EQ it, put the nice reverb in and post and pan it off. And and so there's, there's this connection that happens when you get to sit in, a, and Corey, you know this, and I told you too, you know, when you, if you sit, when you're recording with a band and you, you get to be in the control room and hear your guitar coming out, like, oh, that sounds like a record. Because we all know if you sit in the room with the gear, it's great, but it's not the same experience. You know, there's, it could be awesome to hear it coming off the amp, but to hear it going through the, the Neve mic pre's, getting a U67 or a, a Royal Ribbon on something and then getting it blended perfectly and placed in a mix, there's, um, a thing that I had a problem with too, that we grow up with the gear, we try to get these sounds out of our amps, but there's that process that we knew as guitar players, how to get to the guitar speaker. But you have to be sort of a recording nerd, which I, I, I love doing this stuff, a, a recording minded person to go, well, how do you get it from the guitar speaker and translate it through the recording process? And it's a different part of the brain. Um, it's And that was my my goal for, since I was a kid. Like, why can't I sound like this? And you realize that there's no way I'm going to get that out of the amp. And as an example, no one's ever seen Steve Ray Vaughan with a Dimension D by Roland. It's not in his rig. But if you listen to David Bowie's record, Let's Dance and China, there's a Dimension D on it. And Stevie never put that on there, but that's part of that tone. And that was all done by the recording engineer. So how do we, how do we make stuff that gives you that sounds like a record tone? We have to control the whole thing. Right. And I think that's one of the things when years before Ox ever came out, Bill Putnam Jr., who owns Universal Line and runs it, um, had come over the house here. This room was a little different at the time. And he's a guitar player. And we started talking about amps. And I was playing a Marshall. He's like, how does it sound so good? I was like, well, because there's a cabinet 40 feet away in another area of the house rattling. And to go, you can only get this sound by this Marshall being on 10, even though we're talking over it to the monitors. I'm destroying another room to do this in post. And it's pretty funny that a couple of years later, he's like, we have this thing we want to work on. I think you <laughs> right um, and, and I think it's, the, hopefully that answers some of your questions, but it's, it's that thing of, you know, I, I just want to make cool music or just play guitar, even if I'm not recording. Can't I just get a cool tone and have it inspire me to, to play guitar? And, you know, like even right now, you're not seeing it, but on the other side of this wall, it's just 100 watt Marshall stock. Right probably on seven lot but and i can talk over it and i what comes out of the speakers sounds like me getting to be in the control room of a great studio and there's a a, a thing to that that i'm not sure everyone gets to experience but now thanks to the processing of computers and home studios now we all get to feel a little bit of that now and i think it's exciting stuff so so tell us a little bit about how Ox is able to harness some of those uh, things that you're talking about in the studio, the mojo that uh, 
they got from Van Halen in the studio or your great story about, uh, you know, the over drum overheads of Hendrix capturing, you know, his Marshall. You know, if you can briefly talk about how and why it and so how, how this product is so important and True Fire just happens to be giving one away. So and they use one in their studio, you know, and a lot of True Fire artists have them in their studios like I do because it's it's just life changing. Oh, it is. And I'll tell you, it's, it wasn't even anything that was a, that freaky when you think about it. If you look at it, and a, this was one of the moments for me, this was a long time ago, I was on a project where I was in New York with the Hendrix tapes with Eddie Kramer. They're sitting on the desk. I'm holding the same tape that has Winnie Cries Murray and Purple Haze on it. The same four-track tape. And um, Axis Bold as Love. There was another tape, another four-track that had that. Well, it's only got four tracks, so really, how much isolated guitar can you get out of it? But interestingly enough, that four track of Axis Bold as Love had vocal, guitar, bass, and drums on the same mono track, and then there was spare stuff. Um, and when the tapes were going up and he was putting them up, he had the drum track solo, the drum and bass track solo, and he started Axis Bold as Love. And when he played it back, I'm like, the guitar is sitting on that track. He's like, Oh yeah, because people don't realize ninety percent of that guitar tone is the overhead of the drums. Wow! If you, now when you listen to it, and uh, some of the mixes take the, the really dry guitar mic on the cab and pan it off, and the drums are over here, yeah. depending on which version you have of that, that record. But then you realize that big boom, that bloom, it's all room. It's all wood, glass coming off a room with three musicians in it. Right. And it going into that drum overhead. And then it dawned on me like, man, if I really want to get these classic tones like Zeppelin and Clapton and even all this other stuff, you have to be in that environment and to have those mics and that and to know when is it about close miking, moving mic an inch off the cone, using a room mic. How do you blend those without getting face problems? And then that's when become that, that engineer brain starts kicking in on how to do that. Which again it's a whole other talent of people who know great guitar tones and you ask someone like how'd you get that tone it's like well it's four mics over here we had a baffle bouncing off this we left the drum mics open and you're like i can't do this in my bedroom or or even my project studio or my moderately equipped studio you have to be in these giant rooms like an ocean way or you know england olympic studios where they did a lot of the stones records right same place where they did Hendrix. So, so ultimately, what's what I found great is that you can get really close with Ox. You can, you can not only the the thing is, it's like an homage product. You know, what I mean, it's paying homage to that process. It's not a modeler. It's not uh, an IR player or any of that kind of thing. It's got twenty plus cabinets in it, six microphones, room sound, and post effects. And last year, it was given an update with a, a bunch of new fun cabs. I think James, you're going to play one or two of those. Um, and there was a foot, foot switch capability. So Tor, as someone, I know what they were talking about was how do we get more players that are into heavier tones into Ox and can we supply some cabinets for them? So can you just, just tell some of the folks like how Ox really works for someone like you that's going for you know those kinds of tones and you want to take it on your death metal gig from time to time? <laughs> Yeah, and I actually I have taken it uh, to a couple of death metal gigs. So yeah, when I started working at Uway, and you know James is really the guy behind Ox, so I I just sort of piggyback a little bit on all his hard work. Um, it was pretty obvious to me that you know Ox was designed when it came out, you know, for more of the vintage classic tones, and it can do pretty much anything from you know from West Montgomery all the way up to like Stones and Hendrix, even Van Halen and stuff. Um, but there were a couple and a, a couple of cabinets missing for the guys who are into like really hard stuff, which is you know mainly the vintage thirty cap. Um, so we added two different ones, right. um, a four by twelve Marshall style cap, and then an oversized Mesa Boogie rectifier, which are you know arguably the two you know go to standards if you want to capture metal tones, regardless of whether you're into like you know new metal or death metal or black metal or whatever you can think of those are the caps that are used um, so we added that and you know it certainly made me happy because that meant that i could use the ox both you know as a studio tool and actually as a live tool as well right um, which to be honest i couldn't quite get the tones i needed for that kind of gig before that before it okay yeah and those, those new cabinets really really sound good for sure and what's cool is you can um there's this foot switch functionality where you can take a simple 
uh, dare I say cheap, <laughs> uh, three button foot switch, and you can turn off the post effects that are in Aux. But you know, for people that are just joining us, they might not know what Aux is. So I'll give the elevator pitch real quickly. It's what's called a premium reactive load box and guitar recording system. So the ultimate idea is that it's gonna harness the tone from your tube amplifier. And it's a, a load box basically tricks your amp into thinking it's a speaker and says, hey, I'm safe. You can turn me up and go nuts just like you normally would with a cabinet. But it's it's ultimately harnessing that tone, not only from the preamp, but the power amp. So this isn't any kind of like soaky thing where we're gonna like be able to just gas the front end of your amp. You're getting the whole really uh, organic vibe of your tube amp for sure. And then what you're gonna do is take that tone through more of the guitar recording system aspect where you're gonna be able to apply different cabinets and different microphones on those cabinets. You can make them on or off axis. You can add room sound. If the room is too bright, you can put a carpet underneath it to dampen it. You can add post effects and James talked about a little bit of it. That's all the stuff afterwards. It has nothing to do with your pedal board because if you plug, uh, a, a, I have a cool tube reverb back there. And if you plug that into a Marshall, it's gonna go berserk. Like it's not gonna sound the way you want it to, which is why, you know, they would record guitar tones dry in the studio and then add that stuff later. And it would be this beautiful saran wrap of tone, if you will, <laughs> you know? And, and it, uh, that's what Ox really pays homage to. And it does it gorgeous. It's got plate reverb, uh, compression, EQ, and a whole host of like delay effects, which can also be modulation as well. So the cool thing is, is what James likes to talk about is how you can get one amp to sound like a bunch of different people or players and tones because of room sound, microphones, and post effects. And James got some guitars dialed up there and some presets. I think we're going to even show a screenshot of the Ox app. Now you can control the sort of uh, brain of Ox, if you will, with uh, with an iPad, you know, with an iPad here. Um, I want to give my show notes away. <laughs> and uh, you can also do it with your desktop app as well. It's available for Mac and PC, uh, and it is tons of fun. So, James, if you wouldn't mind kind of talking about how you... Uh, how you're going to play some of these tones, and you're going to do it all through a 100-watt Marshall, I believe, right? It's a 100-watt Marshall in there. In fact, I can connect the dot. I just pulled up the preset for Axis Boulder's room, and I'll literally show you what I heard on the tape, and which is how this was put together. In fact, there's a special thing in there. If you know biodynamic mics, the M160 is typically black, right. um, the modern ones. Well, when I was with Eddie, I asked him, what mic did you put on Hendrix? He said, you have to have the original 60s, silver body Tuco connected before XLR was a standard Canon sometimes we call them as well um and 160 ribbons so it took me a decade and I found a pristine pair in Germany wow so this is so when you get to play this yeah that's what's in aux is my my vintage hoarded pair of M160s that are matched also a pair of those is the when the levy drum sound break that's that, that sound badass thrown over the balcony or this actually the railing in oh, that yeah. case is when the levy breaks same again eddie kramer same mic he liked him so if i pull this again strat you'll hear the here's the actual just m160 on the cab <laughs> kind of boring but it's all about this room guy here <laughs> Without that, you don't get that sort of yeah, too dry. It's all about and, and we're gonna just basically and I love this guitar, but it's time to put this guitar away and grab something a little more useful. This is a basic stock sixty four strap. We're gonna move out of the sixties here. Not a not a reissue, folks. That's a real one. <laughs> <laughs> um we're not gonna put in fact of all the guitars here, I'm gonna pick the most a uh, useful one for this, which is just a modern basic Charvel with a, a humbucker that has a coil tap. So I can quickly just go single coil humbucker, and there's nothing special about it. Um, and I have one amp and one little pedal, the, a little tube screamer if I want to smack the amp a little harder. So if I just grab this, again, stain with this guitar, and I have a few picks, some green and yellow Tortex kind of things. And if I just surf this, this will explain to you why one amp can actually get a great clean sound, a great distorted sound, a great vintage distorted sound, a great modern sound, depending on the speaker. The speaker, if you think about it, is the biggest filter your guitar amp has. 
it is the one piece in the chain that's going to let all the high end through or take all the high end out or focus your mid range or tighten your bottom end. If you have the time, you could take one amp and have 10 different cabinets and basically sound like a whole bunch of different amps. Yeah. So all I'm going to do is take this Marshall. We're going to just surf a few presets and see if I'm not full of it. Pretty drastic too. You'll have some different ones there for us too. Yeah. And again, I think um, I have a friend, Dewey, so, and he always says like, I'm good for about five seconds of somebody's style these days. And then I just turn back into me. So I'm going to contain my riffage to the key pieces without going too far because then I start to suck. By the way, I think you were referring to Dweezil Zappa, uh, yeah. true fire educator as well, and yeah. all around amazing guy. He basically joked, he's like, yeah, dude, you could do Stevie Ray for like five seconds, and it's like Stevie Ray Santiago. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Stevie Ray Santiago, let's hear it. Yeah, yeah but uh, so here, I'm going to just pull up a preset. Again, same app. I'm not going to change anything. And obviously, all I just need to do is turn the app a little more. I'm going to just turn up the app and smash a friend. So why does that sound different than what we just had? Because it's an Alte speaker with all this gnarly, pokey mid-range and high-end sizzle and, a, and an aluminum dust cap. And that specific mic that... As you research everybody's recording sessions, you realize, oh, he used, you know, it's a 421 mic on an Altec. Again, same Marshall, but sounds completely different from this. I've not changed anything on the amp. There's nothing changed. That's all. That era Marshall cabinet with those mics panned off, off axis kind of stuff. And again, I could do the same thing, not changing a single thing on the app. We're going to try and do Gary Moore. You can just kind of hear the pick attack is back. That, obviously, that wasn't how we ended that. But you got pl great plate reverb in there, too. Yeah, and that's what's going to start happening is as I start picking the mic, because a mic, if you think just how devastating a speaker can ruin your amp or make it sound great, then you've got the next filter, the microphone. Picking a condenser, a ribbon, a dynamic mic, is it pointed in the center of the cone, away from it? Are you blending a ribbon with a condenser or a dynamic right. with a ribbon? That's a whole nother world. And then we start talking about post-EQ and the reverb and how what kind of reverb is, delay pans. So that same thing, like if I literally pull over and do this, which is probably the worst example, this is... <laughs> That's a direct amp. Direct, yeah. Direct. And that that has nothing. That that sounds nothing like the next preset, which is like uh, where's it? Elliot Randall, if I recall. Randall, you know, Elliot Randall, and then, or this. <laughs> Jeff Beck in the late '60s, tracking uh, with a, a, a U67 20 feet away, cranked up. Again, not changing anything on the end. Same thing. Or you go to. We'll try one more. Uh, <laughs> Step out, you start doing Clapton, you start getting into Beatles. Or I take some gain off of it. But again, uh, here's the fun thing about Marshall amps. If you roll down the volume a little bit, and we just pick like a clean sound, we'll do, um, where was it, over here. There's some fun stuff like here, that. There's nothing on that. If I just pull up this thing in single quo mode. <laughs> You got a clean sound again. That was the same amp that was just screaming on something else. Just turn down the volume, pull down the volume on the amp maybe a little bit. As opposed to, again, if you do that, back to Humbucker. So, and again, you start getting into effects. Now we got delays and reverbs and compressors, and you can start to do a lot more. Panning, delays, and reverbs. I mean, that you could basically spend your entire time doing this. And I learned something uh, by a lot of the session guys. There's Landau, Tim Pierce. Uh, a lot of these guys started doing this where they would take a couple of amps, mic the amp themselves, and their rack was actually a post rack. Wow. So the lexicons, all those delays and even tie things and shimmery stuff, it's all running in post because they, they wanted the amp to sound great. And because you, again, uh, you can't really process 
beautiful studio reverbs in front of the amp. It doesn't really work that well. Um, no, and, and so many amplifiers, their input stages are, are, are much different too. So it all handles, you know, again, that's just me getting as, <laughs> as, as boastful as I can about amps. I don't know shit. I know, <laughs> sorry, I don't know anything, but I do know if you plug one pedal in, it sounds different with another amp. So there you go. But hey, I wanted to ask Tor, um, as, as we sort of close this segment off, you know, seeing that this product now really works for the heavier players in that genre, um, talk to us about people that maybe are using this aside from, you know, people yourself, but like folks that really dig this kind of music, they're like, man, this has changed my world. Um, what kind of interaction have you had with sort of the, the heavier guitar community? When well, it comes I've, to I've had this out um, and showed it to a couple of, of friends and, um, and great guitar players. Um, there's a local, there's a guy I know uh, based not too far from here who has a studio and he's recorded a bunch of pretty famous bands, uh, Black Dahlia Murder, Meshuggah, um, guys like that. And he's, he's raving about it to the point where, you know, as a studio guy and somebody who actually knows how to mic cabinets and knows, you know, has all the gear and has the knowledge on how to use it, you know, he's still actually you know, he's still actually taking the ox out and using it more often than, than not these days because it's just such an easy tool for him. Um, but one of the things I actually find is super interesting is, you know, whenever I talk to James, it's, you know, apart from, you know, being a great guitar player and having, you know, a seemingly bottomless knowledge of guitar gear, he also has equal amounts of knowledge about recording gear. But I think that um a lot of guitar players myself included have spent so much time educating ourselves on the guitar side of things so we know about all you know, we know about les pauls and we know about stratocasters and we know about pedals and we know about amps but when it comes to the recording side of things there's almost this sort of like yeah that's that's magic i'm not going to touch that part of it and that's what when i got my ops that's what really blew my mind about it, it was the fact that you know First of all, suddenly I can get all these amazing tones that I honestly had no idea of how to get before because I would go into the studio and there'd be some guy who spent years, you know, getting that knowledge. And now I can get it, you know, just by, you know, flicking through presets like what James just did before. But the other really cool thing about it was that as you open up the editor and you start looking at it, it's, it's also a learning experience because suddenly you go like, oh, so that sound well said. It's because you know, because you know, James uh, spent the time to actually talk to all these guys and make sure that every single preset that in there that sort of a homage to these classic sounds are actually done using emulations of the real gear that's in there. So if you go in there and you check it out, it's like, oh man! So they use that microphone with with that compressor, and now you can actually go like you internalize and you go like next time I'm actually when I want to make my own preset. I can I can go in and I can pick that cap, but maybe I actually want to try this microphone that I liked on this preset because it had a little bit of a different bottom end. It was a little loose or whatever. Yeah. So it's also a an educational thing for for somebody like me who doesn't come from that studio background. Suddenly going like maybe I can actually I can actually dial in some cool sounds in the studio one day. Man, I was that exactly that spoke to me. We had a question that I'm going to kind of address similarly, but I'm going to get to it anyway. We have a few questions, but. I didn't realize how many of my favorite big guitar tones were created with condenser mics, large diaphragm condenser mics. It gets the depth, height, breadth, width of the guitar sound like nothing else. Cause you think like you're gonna pummel the speaker, you want a 57 on it, you know, and really that's not necessarily the case. So I end up using, especially by myself when I'm teaching or doing a live stream, I'll use a 412, it could be with my Princeton, and uh, and uh, the large diaphragm microphones that are in there because I want it to sound big and large in addition to the the room sound that's in there as well. But You're um, absolutely right, Corey. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow my own thing here and and, 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 and dispel a myth. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lucia. Um, uh, okay. Good. Uh, no, the interesting thing is if you research all the uh, ACDC records, that's you, what I'm thinking of. Yep. Yeah, it's like oh, they didn't use that much distortion. And then you look at the mics; they're U67s. That's a really expensive mic to put on a guitar. But because there's not 10 guitars on those tracks, one, two, those two big guitar sounds of, of those brothers, it just, it's huge. It gets bigger. 
So you, you and you have to gauge it because as we know, the 57 is great at taking the, the bottom out and giving you that punch. So you do get to fit in between a big right. uh, dense track. But right. uh, I'll tell you one other thing. Uh, and this was the worst because I, I never get to tell people what actually happened. But I did research all the Larry Carlton sessions for those Steely Dan sounds. Nice. Um, and I'm going to tell you why the brain is just those two parts. As I asked him, I finally sat down with him. I'm like, okay, so you got to tell me what your favorite mic was for all those sessions. And he goes, I don't care. I don't remember. <laughs> That's the engineer's job. That's my job to play guitar, man. And I think at the end, that's what Ox's job is for you is to, so you don't have to care what, what? the setup is, man. Just play guitar. Okay. Pull up the preset, and then maybe you'll learn later, but to play your guitar, man. There has been moments where people say, I want a hundred different cabinets in this box. And I'm like, I, I use two or three at most, you know. But um, we want to move along and just mention a couple questions. So uh, a gentleman named Jay Doherty. Once we didn't talk about how Ox is hooked up, and it's really important how when you connect Ox, uh, you don't want to you don't want to damage anything, or you want to obviously connect it the, the right way. So, if you could one of you briefly talk about how just how to set Ox up uh, when you get it home. Do, do, do you want to give okay. me? For oh, yeah, I can do that. So I, you can't see it, but I have an Ox over here on the on the side. Um, so the way it's hooked up is that you go out of whatever amp. Obviously, you plug your guitar into your amp, or you plug your guitar into your pedals and then into the front end of your amp. And then from the speaker output of your amp that you typically plug your speaker into, you plug that into the aux. And then aux has an output that goes back into your speaker. So that's one part of aux is essentially the ability to play your amp at a lower volume. So you can set your 100 watt marshal, like what James just played through, and set it to the setting that you, the volume you like to get the sound that you like but then you can use the, the aux to basically suck out some of the power so you can play it at bedroom level or whatever level you want to. So that's one part. The other part is that you can also bypass the speaker cabinet altogether and go out of the line outputs on the back of aux into your recording interface or just directly into whatever kind of you know, powered speakers you have, powered monitors. Um, and that's where you use the, uh, the simulated cabinets and microphones and effects that you just heard before, which is insanely cool. So when I use it here in my room with all these different amps that I have here, I'm just going into a pair of studio monitors and that's what I'm listening to. So the nice thing is I have a couple of different amps here. I have like a Plexi Marshall, I have like more of a JCM metal amp and a little Fendery kind of thing down here. And I just have a couple of presets on the aux that I switch between for here's my Fender sound, here's my metal sound, here's my Hendrix sound. And, you know, it's as easy as that. Yeah, it really is pretty easy to hook up. Um, and it's uh, once you get sort of connected into the uh, the minutia of the app and the in the interface, it's 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 a lot of fun too. So um, did we get a screen freeze? Are we still are we still good, guys? We're, I we're think still good, Corey. Sorry. Okay. I want to let you guys Great. I want to let you guys go. There's a couple questions here that that I'm going to handle, but uh, James and Tor, awesome to have you guys. Good seeing you. Sorry we can't be at a NAMM show, literally rubbing elbows. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe sometime in 2021, we hope. I, I, I don't know. I'd be happy to come visit you in Nashville and get some hot chicken. I will, hey, I will take you anytime you want, man, for sure. I just want to walk into Carter's with you guys and, and <laughs> see the jaws drop. You know? Oh, man, yeah. We'll have we'll have fun, but ladies and gentlemen, your virtual round of applause can go to James Santiago and Tor Morganson from Universal Audio. Thanks so much, guys. We're gonna we're gonna take some questions and move on. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right. So there was a couple other questions I saw come in here. Uh, oh, I forgot to tell James that somebody mentioned his uh, Zappa blanket back there. <laughs> they love that. Um, and just to let you know that. Um, Aux itself is not uh, an amplifier modeler. You use your amplifier, and Aux basically is the speaker and a lot of other stuff on t uh, on the back end, microphones, post effects, and room sound, and that sort of thing. Somebody had a question. I think that was uh, PGD Asensio on YouTube had that. Um, Jason Carter says, is that level of engineering 
learn over time or is it a distinct talent you're born with? Um, I think like anything, it's learned and it's learned by listening to records and experiencing uh, the, the environment and being in the element. Um, Jay also wants to know if you can plug aux directly into the DAW um, or do you have to have an amp? So you plug your amp into the aux and then aux into uh, your Apollo, uh, hopefully your Apollo and Luna at the <laughs> at the end of the stage, which is what we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about next with Tom Waterman as soon as we get him on the horn here. Tom is uh, calling us from the UK. He's gonna talk about not only um, Apollo's console unison technology. Uh, he's gonna talk about how to get really really killer guitar sounds from just taking oh one of these <laughs> and plugging it <laughs> into your Apollo from your guitar. No amplifier needed. It's all in the box. It looks like uh, I can see a picture of him. Here he is. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Good to, have to see you. everyone. Hey, James, nice to see you, man. It's been a while. So how's life across the pond right now? It's good. It's incredibly hot in here because I've got all my all my tube gears turned on, so I feel like I'm in LA. <laughs> I have to turn the AC way down in this room too. It gets it gets pretty pretty warm for sure. Yeah, that's the sad thing about over here. We don't have AC. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, so those of you watching, please welcome uh, UK product specialist Tom Waterman to the show to the live stream. Um, Tom is a wealth of information, man. I, every time I talk to the guy. I learned something new, whether it be about the guitar he's playing or how to make it sound good uh, with my Universal Audio gear. Um, you know, so so those of you that are just tuning in, if you're new to Universal Audio, by far the industry leader in not only professional recording gear but gear that is of professional quality for the consumer. Uh, you can get into this line of of products and really capture. Um, a lot of the same experiences you would have uh, right in your house by using a virtual uh, gear that was really sought after for many, many years and modeled and recreated by some of the greatest minds in the business, for sure. Um, they've been designers of not only recording interfaces and hardware, software now, uh, and um, by consumers, you know, novices and pros alike, for sure. Um, you know, a lot of times in this world, we're using basically a digital or virtual tape machine, and that's what uh, that's what UA has created in Luna. So Tom is going to talk to us about how to not only take your guitar, plug it into a, literally a digital recording interface, make it sound like a real deal guitar amplifier, and then capture that sound in Luna, which is the recording system. So so Tom, if you can get us up to speed a little bit about, let's say somebody buys. Um, uh, an Apollo, how they're going to plug into it. But before we do that, I've got to reiterate, since we're a little more than halfway through here, that we're giving these puppies away. True Fire is, has gone in full Monty and are giving away two Apollo <laughs> Twin Xs, uh, an Apollo X8P, uh, and an Ox box as well. And so you can go to True Fire, you can check in, and you can go to the prize pool as well. And there's a number of different ways that you can enter to win. You can kind of collect uh, those virtual guitar pedals, create a signal chain, and you can up your entries and kind of keep increasing your chances to win. This stuff is, um, this is top of the heat, man. This is what all of my peers in Nashville, when they see my UA rig, they're like, oh man, I wish I had that stuff too, because they want to they take it to the next level and you get what you pay for, man. It is it is really, really top-notch stuff. But Tom is going to talk to us about being a guitar player, you bought an Apollo or you won an Apollo, and how you're going to get some great guitar tones. So um, please, you know, tell us a little bit about your connection to UA briefly and how you got into this whole world. I know we talked the other day and you not only were a guitar player for hire, but you were an artist for a little bit, and then you're in the engineering side and producing. So how did you get here? Um well, it's kind of a funny story, but I, I was a, a wannabe guitar player and I still would class myself as a wannabe guitar player. Um, you know, it's pretty crazy. Oh, what's that? We've got Tommy calling me. Sorry, Corey. It happens. It's live. It's live. <laughs> yes, it is. Tom, go ahead and share and share your, uh, your screen. Ah. So we can pull that up on the screen. Sorry about the interruption, guys. That's okay. So what we're trying to do is we want to get a nice on-screen shot of of Tom's rig. So he's going to show us how he's actually building guitar tones um, 
inside of Luna, and Luna is the recording system that Universal Audio has spent many, many years got developing. It, so when you win or purchase an Apollo, uh, you actually are going to get Luna, you have the ability to get Luna for free. And a lot of times folks are like, well, I got this uh, interface, now what do I do? Well, now you record in Luna. So we good, Tommy? Good, good to go? Good All right. Go. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so I mean, my, my journey in was pretty interesting, but I'd, I'd say I was always a wannabe guitar player and still am, to be honest. Like with you and James and Tor and everyone who really plays, I'm like, the, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the wannabe. But, you know, I, I kind of, uh, about the age of 15, got into a studio and just started T-boying, you know, making cups of tea and going down and kind of just seeing engineering. And it pretty much, my whole thing is just about why things sound the way they do. Um, so like as a guitar player, I approach it as, you know, what kind of pedals, what sheaves, what amps, but it's mostly from an engineering point of view, not so much like as a pure player. And the same is true for microphones or even drum skins and drum tuning. I kind of became a bit of a, a nerd for the, the detail, you know, and then the, my journey with UA started about 20 years ago when I bought some UA gear basically, and it just changed my world. It was like, it was like finally getting access to the good stuff, you know, like it made a huge impact in my music. Uh, so for for me, coming to work for the company was just a bit of an honor, really. You know, I've been with UA for four years, and for me, it kind of closed the loop on why I got into engineering anyway, and to see the guys, you know, up close doing what they do and making products and equipment that kind of shape the way modern music's made. Like, so many hit records are made and recorded with Apollos and UAD plugins, or our hardware, all the analog gear, that for me, it was a case of, you know being honored really to like represent those products and demo them and, and talk to people about the history behind all of the recording technology and, and guitars and whatever we might get into you know and they're super passionate at the company too it's it's really i mean i'm i feel the same way like i when ox came out i sought them out and i said i can be your demo guy i can tell this story and i feel like a lot of people at the company are uh they're ready, willing, and able to tell the story because it's fun and, and it's everybody's really amped up about it. But but you got a you got a uh, Strat style guitar there, and you got an Apollo fired up, and um, I think we have the ability to share your screen. And what's going to happen is you're going to plug your guitar directly into your Apollo. Mm -hmm. and I have another interface here, Corey, with just just to show people this is the arrow. So you know you have like a DI input or an instrument input headphones have some stuff to connect speakers and microphones to it that's pretty much standard on any interface and that's the case whether we've got the apollo x4 that i'm using or the apollo rack units or the small arrow that we have here you know and something special has to happen uh, when you plug a guitar into a device like that because it's not a guitar amp so mm -hmm. you'll get techie for a moment because it's important to kind of relay why you can plug your guitar in there yeah well i mean most guitars like this, for example, being a passive Strat style guitar, they have quite a high output impedance and actually changes depending on where the tone controls are and when the volume controls are. So when people talk about, you know, amps cleaning up and being touch responsive when you can back off the volume control and still get glassy highs and things like that, it's because you're not losing tone when you get to a really good tube amplifier or a good guitar amp or a great pedal because it's kind of expecting to see that variance and, and have a nice high impedance for you to go into. So if you've ever tried plugging a guitar into just like your hi-fi at home when you started, like my first recording was dubbing cassette tape to cassette tape on a hi-fi. It had no top end and it sounded horrific because you're not plugging into a nice high high impedance input, which you need for like a, a tube guitar amplifier, which is generally around a million ohms if you plug into a, a Fender tube amp or something. And that's kind of what happens in Apollo, but we've taken it a step further with something called Unison Technology, which then lets us switch the impedances on these connections and give you the feel of like different pedals and different amps when you're plugging into different jacks on the front of them you know so the apollo is really intelligent in the way that it interfaces with your guitar basically and like a lot of uh gear you know in this in this realm the stuff that's under the hood isn't obvious you know and somebody would say well why would i choose an apollo over something else it's like this is this is exactly why because if you're a guitar player just using a two-channel interface um you know, you want to make sure that that dedicated guitar input has the ability to actually respond to your guitar as a guitar a guitar amp would. And one of the things I, I thought about, about was, you know, plugging your guitar in straight is good for Prince, you know, or somebody like that, or Corey Wong nowadays or something like that. But like, let's say we want an honest to goodness, you know, sort of Fender or Marshall type of amp tone, but plug into this interface. Can you show us how, how easy it is to walk through uh, that sort of process? 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've actually made a load of like classic guitar sounds where we've got some that were done direct and some that are done with amps, but I'll show you how to like build an input in Luna. But just so people are aware as well that um, Luna, when you open it, it's a, it's a recording system, which we've just released a few months ago. And it was announced at the start of 2020 and it now runs and comes for free with your Apollo interface. You can download Luna and actually get stuck into multi-track recording, editing, um, and because all of your settings, so any guitar amp stuff that we have, because we have DSP in our interfaces, which effectively is like having a load of pedals or processors built inside your interface so you can shape the sound when you're recording and you can play through it um, in real time and it doesn't feel latent and you, you get the feel under your fingertips, which is why that, that impedance thing I'm talking about, it's, right. not, um, it's not even that noticeable as an end user you just kind of plug in and play guitar and it just feels right and so like what i say to guitarists is like have a play on it have a feel you know it just it feels good the reason it feels good is because we're doing stuff under the hood so that when you plug into a fender or a marshall type of input you know you're getting that feel you know and so that's really what luna allows us to do now is integrate those settings into your recording session so when you come back in a month you can go back to exactly how you had it and overdub a guitar or do whatever you want to do um, so when you download Luna, you get this kind of welcome screen where you can see some basic tutorials if you want to get stuck in, if anyone wins an Apollo in this amazing competition, right? Um, but otherwise, we'll just jump straight in and open this uh, this session that I've got. Go for it, man. Cool, cool. So see here, Luna's building some tracks. Uh, for anyone who's not familiar with uh, sort of recording software, we have, um, this is the mixer view, and then you have a, a what we call the timeline view where you're able to see the tracks as you record them here. Uh, so I've just got right now one input that I've called tuner, uh, just so that, you know, just to show here, when we turn on an input into record arm, I've actually got a tuner plug in here. So if I wanted to just quickly check, you know, you can bring up some tuning really quickly, right? Which I've done. Go for it. So hopefully it won't be too bad. Um, but let's start with, say, uh, I heard um, James talking about the Jimi Hendrix tone. So I made some sort of Jimmy type tones here so let's start with these tracks so i'm just going to go to the mixer view so you can see what we've got going on so up here you'll see the input which is guitar di which is literally the front jack on the on the apollo here i'm plugging into channel two and picking that one up here in software and as soon as i turn on uh record enable we have this technology called arm which is this little button here this this orange dot which is called accelerated real-time monitoring and what that means is the apollo interface itself is doing all the processing in its own hardware DSP so that we can run through guitar amps and processing with things like pedals and equalizers and really go deep into tone creation in the way that James was just talking about, particularly when he was talking about pulling up the Axis Boulders Love multi-track and how he had the room bleeding in and all that sort of stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, he even mentioned like Olympic Studios, I, I think a minute ago, where yeah. um, some of the consoles that you have there, originally at the start of the studio, they built their own desks. Um, made pr primarily with germanium transistors and they were called a Helios. Um, and we actually have an emulation of this that UA have done, which I'm, I've got on this sound, um, which gives you a quite spongy sort of woody tone. So not only can we emulate interfacing your guitar to an amp and the amplifier itself, but then also how it would have been recorded and processed all the way to the tape machine in a studio like Olympic in the 60s. And that's kind of the sound we can build. So um what i've got here is actually a marshall plexi classic which is the guitar amp that comes for free with the um the apollo so just here we've got like the kind of that mild breakup right kind of grimy plexi sound that you you kind of would know from a Jimmy type of record, you know, with a strat, you know, where we're plugging into this input. But if we change the input on the uh, amp here. We get different feels, right? You can get all of those sort of different tones that you'd get by plugging into the different channels of the amp, but also the impedances that you get. So I really love that feature because immediately, you know, you're going to be dialing in that sound. However, and it is worth mentioning right now, because I'm running this amplifier in what we call the record effect slot and not in unison here, because I've also got a fuzz pedal there, um, I would need to move this amplifier to this slot 
if I wanted to take advantage of all the, the impedance switching, because that's what happens in unison technology. So let me very quickly, I'm just going to copy the settings from this and remove that. Yeah, so what Tom is saying is that um, in unison technology, it's a, it's a lot more as if you're just plugging into the amplifier. And then what's actually going to happen, um, that's that's going to go right to tape as you record. I mean, in, in the record effect slot, it would as well. But uh, you're going to really hit all that natural feel by putting it in that unison slot. Yeah, so because I've moved it, because to do the Jimmy thing, I also wanted to stick a fuzz before the amp, and that's the beauty of, well, of Luna, Luna or the Apollo system in general is that you can daisy chain processing. So, you know, you might if you put a pedal in the unison slot, then the Apollo will actually become like the pedal, and you've plugged into either say like a, uh, you know, a TS overdrive or a raw kind of like rat style distortion, or in, you know, in my case, it was a fuzz pedal. Um, and then, you know, the amp can come second, or if you do what I've just done and move the amp to the unison slot, we now have access to the, the technology that makes it feel like we're plugging into that Marshall, right? <laughs> that kind of stuff right now we can move to the different inputs and get complete different gain staging you know may much cleaner sound when you come down here so you've got that all that kind of stuff so you can choose where you where you go with it um, and the cool thing with Luna is you've actually got undos as well so we can just undo any of the settings that we just tweaked, even where I moved the plugins away, for example. So yeah. I can put it back how I had it, which is super cool because you can kind of mess around like you would build your pedal board and be stuffing this jack into this thing, into that, and then go, oh, I don't like that, and just go back. Right. So Probably that's kind of <laughs> Then unplugging cables. <laughs> yeah, it's so much faster. I didn't have to crawl on the floor, right? And then exactly. the guitar falls off your neck and you know all the <laughs> stuff that like you have in band practice when you were a kid, right? <laughs> So what, what I've done is like, I wanted to sort of build the whole Jimmy tone. So after that amp's been mic'd up, in this case with the Plexi Classic, we've got a, a 57 mic here in this pop-out panel, which shows you, you know, some overall master controls, like a little bit of EQ, for example. Um, but I've gone into this Helios channel amplifier. So just have a listen to this without it on. And then when it's on, it's got that nice, bright, kind of spongy sound to it. So it's got a bit of bite and a bit of woodiness to it. And more of a like a snap and a sparkle, right? Um, so that's, you know, just adding some top end and a bit of equalization. And then I believe like Eddie Kramer, when he was recording a lot of this stuff, would use DBX compressors. Maybe not quite on some of the early, early Jimmy stuff, but a bit later. So I put a touch of compression on there as well. <laughs> And it just sort of sponges up the whole front of it and gives it that bounce like the amp's really loud, you know, like it's compressing in the room a bit. And then, of course, any good recording done in the 60s and 70s would go to tape. So the beautiful thing with this is all of these plugins, they're all Universal Audio, Audio's model plugins, are running on the DSP of the Apollo and in, in real time without latency, or, you know, without notes, noticeable latency. And so we can actually build the chain like it was in the studio. So we've got a Strat to a Plexi to a Helios amplifier, compressed with a DBX, which is like a seven, an early 70s VCA compressor, going to a tape machine, you know, without noise reduction on it. It got noisier, but we're now we've got that whole. You get that. Oh. All sort of like snap and snarl you'd expect out of it. Um, but yeah. like James said, um, adding some reverb and room is where you can take things further. So because we sort of built a sound we could record, um, Luna has this really cool feature where you can create a couple of auxiliary sends, which effectively in a studio would have been a knob on the console where you could have sent the signal to a reverb or to an echo chamber. And you can do that by building these, these bus channels um, and putting them into what we call ARM so that we have two effects that we can send into. So these just turned on. I've called them Jimmy Room and Jimmy Echo. So the first one is Ocean Way, which I know James mentioned it, you know, half an hour ago, um, which is this really wonderful room sound. And 
but yeah, just but sure. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Like when you listen to Jimmy records, you hear so much of that just bouncing in the background, like the amp being super loud in a room, and there's all of that. You know, when he does all the percussive stuff, you just got all of the bounce in the background. It's the room, so we can do this. And and the Oceanway plugin is actually a a universal audio model of a studio that our, the father of UA, Bill Putnam Sr., built in 57 and 58. So I've actually set it up like it would have been uh, actually a horn section in Studio A with a bunch of mics far away. And I'm just using that like it would be, the amp would be bleeding into a load of horn microphones, for example, you know, which is kind of crazy. And then from there, we've got this um, Galaxy Tape Echo plugin, which is like a spring reverb with a tape slap on it. Um, and that just does we can listen to it on its own here it's kind of like a just a splashy reverb tail but it, then you get the full sound right so we've gone from what would have been let's just go back to the tuner track for a sec here the eyed guitar without all the ua processing on it right right and, and that's, then, that's what, what a difference from that you know uh plugging your guitar in straight to actually hearing some stuff on it yeah and then now we're like jimmy playing in the studio and you get that old kind of reverb tail on it and that nice bit of room and that's kind of one sound you could build in Luna and then record it's that easy once you've got it set up we just go straight into record and we're ready to go and we're going to record in the the guitar what's interesting actually just to bring it up is the the anything in the record effect so that's the plexi classic right that's going to be captured but all the processing I've put on it afterwards for example the the compression and the tape and everything we can tweak that afterwards because this is not recorded it's there for sort of Edit, editing later, you know. So here we go. We go. works basically yeah so what everybody's seeing there is uh his audio is actually being recorded into Luna. there's a number of different ways that you could manipulate it um and i want to go i want to grab some questions but i want to talk about a couple other things you know what's uh i had the uh, the pleasure of doing a little six-part series on luna uh for true fire uh, to got to go with this promotion and you know, I want to keep talking about this through this broadcast that you can enter to win this stuff, folks. You can enter to win Apollo recording interfaces. You can enter to win an Oxbox from Universal Audio and Truefire. Uh, they partnered up to do this really great promotion. Um, and uh, there's a number of ways to do that at truefire.com. You can check in to the broadcast, get some extra points. You can go to the prize pool, all that kind of stuff for sure. Um, a couple of things that... Um, I want to I want to get into I want to ask I want to answer a few questions here and then we'll talk about a couple other things uh, and really nerd out and show why Luna is special. Um, but let me get to a couple questions here first. Um, can you route one unison channel with a distortion pedal into another unison channel with an amp sim? Is, you is that can't. No, not currently. So um, that's quite tricky to do because of the way the processing works. So the only way to try and um, achieve that would be to have hardware pedals and then use the you know uad amplifiers so use your pedal board into into uh, the sort of playback effect section where you have the amplifiers in monitoring and not in the record path so you could record your pedals but not record an amp sound and then mess with the amp later right um i'm wondering if uh could you could you put a bus like an amp in a in a bus and then route that signal to a bus. I don't really know what the difference would be other than using an amp in the record effects. You could probably, that's probably what's brilliant about Luna is that you can stack a lot of those things that you would normally want to route into each other through that signal chain. Yeah, are you still seeing my screen share, Corey, or not? I'm, I'm not right now. No, and unfortunately, we didn't see the plugins pop up. Um, but folks, what, what you were 
can see is if you go and search any of the the UA products he's been talking about, the plugins, the Marshall Plexi Classic, uh, the Oceanway Room Sound, it is d a deep dive into not only audibly, but very cool visually to a lot of the things that he was doing to kind of tweak the sounds. You see they're pulling up right now. Um, there's, there's a lot of amazing emulations that this company has put many, many hours in to uh, faithfully recreate um, uh, a lot of the, the, the hardware that really has been synonymous with great recordings over the years. Um, here's a big one. Everybody's going to ask this. Any plans on releasing Luna for Windows? Couldn't comment at the moment, um, but you know we've had a lot of requests. So there's a feedback button in the top right-hand corner of the application. You can always, if you're using it, you have a Mac, but you also have a Windows machine, you can let us know. If not, you could you know, shout on the forums and all social media. And I guess the louder the noise, the more it uh, gets looked at. <laughs> I know that Luna in general was a long time in the making. So uh, it's across the finish line and, and I'm using it every day. It is my go-to DAW. Um, and a couple of things real quickly. Do you still have that, uh, that track recorded in Luna? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. So, do you want me to share my desktop and see if we can get as opposed to just the lunar window and we can I don't, get more I don't know if, if that will work. We'd have to ask our, our yeah. tech monitor. Tom, Tom, can we do that? Tom, if you want to try that, that might work. Because that'll really enhance the experience even more. The big Let's question see. mark there. That <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Hang, hang tight. That means like, you know, we can't do that. Maybe I can screen share that and you'll see more, actually. <laughs> but okay. I thought what would be cool would be um, just take that track and pitch it up a, a couple semitones. <laughs> okay so um we'll you're seeing this half step so you're hendrix then so you're down Ooh. yeah See, now okay. we're, if we're so this is a really uh, brilliant thing that you can do in luna and and i've done it a lot in my creating of backing tracks if i need um i played a bass line that was in one particular key i can actually change it and luna is so powerful that it does it without any glitch at least that i found so can you oh, it's it's fantastic. Yeah. So here's the here's the Jimmy playing. Wow. It, when you really do it, it, you know, one of the things that's funny is I've done it a lot on bass. And when I've tried to do it in other programs in the past, it gets super glitchy with those frequencies. Um, and the funny thing is, is when you do it in Luna, it takes on, it's still kind of a human element to it. It still sounds and feels right. Now, I mean, I'm sure if you go an octave higher, it might be kind of weird, but it could do it and there won't be any artifacts that you'll hear as well, which is another, it's an amazing feature of, of Luna for sure. Oh yeah, I mean, one of the things I actually really love doing is you can take guitars and turn them into like a bass line. If I play something monophonic, oh, just yeah, super that's killer. Cool. That's a great idea. If we just do kind of like, um, oh well, let's try. Um, that'll do. But like. It's, it's like you can actually fake a bass guitar part by playing guitar and just pitching it down an octave. It sounds crazy. It sounds I, love, amazing. I so love that. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Um, a couple of things. Um, what's great about Luna is when you said the tape saturation, and there's also something called Neve summing that's in Luna as well. And um, I know we have probably have a lot of guitar fans here, but um, tape and Neve summing that live in this program, it really takes it to a next level because you can get all the, the warmth, saturation, punchy feel. I mean, it's making my mixes sound better and I'm pretty far from a mix engineer. You know, it's just like, it's because I know that when you plug that stuff into a studio, just like James was saying about microphones and preamps and all that right sort of flavor bleeding into each other, it just kind of naturally sounds good. So when you do that in the digital realm and you start to incorporate this inherently analog stuff, it really makes it sound like what you'd expect to hear from your favorite recordings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you consider that we've plugged in a direct guitar, we've recorded through a Plexi with the right uh, mix and console from the studio in the 60s and the right compression. We've hit, I've actually recorded, but put a tape plug-in on, you know, in, in here, but I could actually turn that off and actually add tape, which is the same version, 
but just running within Luna here. And that's actually Oxide's included in Luna. So you can have the sort of tracking to two inch tape experience just right here in the software. And you can dial in a, a saturation amount per channel. So that now is like the, the Plexi guitar sound recorded to tape. And then we're actually playing it back into the console where I can hit it with the Helios channel amplifier and the DBX. And hopefully now you can see all these. So if I just very, oh, quick, yeah. if I very quickly go back into record mode, you'll be able to also see the Plexi as well. So I can bring up what you were missing earlier. There it is. Awesome. I think when you share just the lunar screen, it doesn't get the floating windows in Skype for some reason. But yeah, um, so that's the Helios, which is this like really nice vintage germanium style channel amplifier. That's the old, uh, really early compressor. Um, sort of, it's really like a 70s compressor, to be honest. And then you've got the, the Marshall Plexi, and that's the little pop-out panel I was on about with the you know, output settings. And you can switch these jack sockets. And when it's in a unison slot, you're actually getting that feel when you're plugging into the, the front of your Apollo. So what's cool is we can record through all this legit, you know, bona fide as the studio was back in the day chain. And then as you're saying, uh, Corey, when you come out of record here, we've then got our reverb still available to send to here, you know, so I can put more of the guitar in the room. Um, we've got the tape echo, but also on these buses, we could hit built in Neve summing which then if anyone's seen Sound City or the Sonic Highway stuff that Dave Grohl did, you'll see how famous that Neve sound became through like all of these amazing records that were made there. And we've emulated a version of that console and put it directly into Luna and you can even run it on the main mix bus. So for example, all of your guitar tracks, all of your drum tracks can go through these buses that give you this fat saturation that just gives it more life. It's a bit like playing through a good guitar amplifier where things just get saturated and really nice sounding, you know, and I've even got the Neve here on the, the room tone, for example, or on the, the tape delay. And if we go back um, to my original guitar. So it's going to be subtle there, but it won't be on the main output. Let's check this out. So you should be hearing huge changes with just that Neve going on and off across one guitar. When you start doing that across a mix with drums, with bass, everything else, Luna just starts to sound huge. It really comes alive with, with actually minimal effort too, which is pretty great. Um, hey, I got um, a bunch of questions here. One of the cool things, um, somebody asked, can you jump the channels on the Marshall? Yes, you can. Um, I do it often. Uh, so you can actually digitally emulate that jumped channel thing that you can even see it back there on the my Marshall to my, right back there. <laughs> There's a cable going from a low, uh, you know, input. There we go. See, Tom, you're yeah. on it, man. Fantastic. You just click, click through different, uh, you know, clicking on the connector gives you different combinations of jumping channels. Yeah. Uh, a gentleman, David for guitar wants to know, are Luna plugins separate from the Apollo? So the, all these plugins that I'm running in inserts, these are UAD plugins, which run on Apollo, but also on our DSP products that you can use for mixing, where you get more power for your computer. Um, but things like the tape that are built in here, which I can turn on and off individually in the tape slot, this section um, in the mixer, and also the Neve summing, which is on and off on every bus, for example, they're actually um, built in to Luna and running on your CPU on your native computer. So we split some of the Luna processing natively and some of the plugins running on the Apollo. So right now, because of obviously the competition's on, but we've also got a great promo. If you were to get an Apollo, you'd actually get a bunch of the plugins that I'm showing, things like the Helios and uh, the guitar amplifier and the, the tape delay, depending on which um, unit you buy, there are different plugins included in promotion. So it's a really good time to kind of get extra stuff alongside Luna to be able to take your mixes and recording that little bit further. Yeah, I think um, I'm using uh, the plate reverb a lot and that's now included, I think, for the promo too. Do we have the pure plate handy real quick? We do. I've got a couple of different sounds actually. Let's just take this slow bluesy one that's next here. So let's get into record. Yeah, let's show this one nice and vibey and then we'll wrap it up for the folks. Yeah, so this is just loaded up uh, the Fender Tweed guitar yeah. amplifier. And I've actually got a, a UA preamp, which is included with an Apollo as a, actually as like a booster. So I'm using studio gear before an amp, which is something that would be a pain to do in the real world without taking quite a lot of time and using reamp boxes and things like that. 
Um, there's some compression, same type of thing. We've got a uh, some EQ with the Helios, and then um, just a tiny bit of EQ with the Precision, which is also included. I'm just going to turn this off, and then I've got a couple of effects. One of which is the Pure Plate, which uh, you're talking about, Corey, which is in, yeah, it's part of the promo. So this is that beautiful yeah. early '50s, well, mid to late '50s reverb sound of a steel plate suspended, where they kind of just vibrate it, and it gets this super whip crack. It's a really killer fast sound. sound. Yeah, I mean, you can probably hear like the the sort of whip crackiness of the the reverb. Oh yeah. And that's the plate, you know, and it's such a unique sound. And we, we sort of, I think we were the first company to ever really model that. So, so it sounded real, you know, like yeah. dead on. And then this is the precision delay, which is actually included with all the Apollos. And that just is a really good stereo delay unit where you can do ping pongs or you can do modulated chorusy type delays. So I've just set it up as a, a, a kind of cleany blues sound with them. Um Which is great, but then if you stick a bit of great. gain before the amp with this Unison uh, preamp, we get. <laughs> totally different thing because we still yeah, push essentially... the amp. Yeah, sorry. I mean, it hit you there. Um, we're, you're essentially driving the amplifier harder with the Unison preamp. It's it's fantastic, and that's a tube amp, a tube preamp emulation, too. So it's tube into tube, you know. For exactly. Sure. Yeah, I love this thing because basically you can cut some lows, cut some highs, create a mid boost, add a right. load of gain, and what you previously would have to do is use a DI, go into a reamper, then go to the amp, then mic it all up. You can just do these sorts of things super quick. And I'm already exhausted from that. Don't say. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like someone needs. I need an assistant for that. Like it's been a yeah. long time since I would crawl around doing that myself. But uh, the ability to get that. Yeah. And that that woofy woofy tweed thing going on for sure. Uh, somebody said that's a, quite a lot of set of. That's a really great set of features. Sounds impressive. It does. I mean, folks, I use these every day. Um, I on sessions that I do from my house. I'll I've started to craft guitar tones just in Luna because I love the plugin so much and they sound so good. It's actually helped me sort of cross over to another level of creativity because even though I got all those pedals back there and a bunch of other stuff, it's yet another kind of avenue for me to go down and uh just sort of mine for new tones really for sure but um i think we're i think we're ready to wrap it up tom and you're you're so uh knowledgeable we really appreciate you spending your time it's it's late over there for sure about 12 <laughs> 12 30 ish i'd say something like that uh, it's, yeah, it's 11 30 but it's not too bad <laughs> yeah um i would be looking at my eyelids i've been go for a musician i've been going to bed way too early <laughs> <laughs> the old musician lockdown yeah uh, cool. exactly exactly but um Tommy, if you're with us, um, yeah, I'm here. Uh, good. We're gonna uh, we're just gonna talk to people a little bit more, tell them about how they're gonna continue to enter to win all this great universal audio gear. Well, the thing that's great too is if you if you win an Apollo or if you decide to even purchase one, you get a boatload of those plugins for free. And many of which was the ones that Tom was using, um, and it's a really interactive community out there too. When he talks about, I don't know of. Um, Another thing where you can go on the Luna and you can hit the help desk sort of thing or connect to the uh, the community essentially. They're putting videos up all the time, tutorials, all all of this great stuff with top level producers, engineers, and musicians to show you how you can get the most use out of this gear. Now's the best time to kind of dive into it because a lot of us are stuck at home and hopefully creating and having fun and making music at the same time. But um, I'm going to say uh, thanks to Tom for joining us. Of course, thanks to James and Tor who joined us as well. Um, and you want to enter to win these products on TrueFire.com. You want to enter their prize pool. There's a number of different things you can go do there to increase your chances at winning these great pieces. I mean, this is top of the line gear, folks, for sure. Uh, you can see you can win an ox box like the ones I got behind me there. Um, if you don't have one, two is even better. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, in any case, um, go there and. It's not, yes, Tommy, you got a question. Yeah, I was just going to say really quick. Also, one of the best ways is to check in. It's the easiest way to do it. If you go right back to the uh yeah so set the shonen on the screen 
on the right. actual live page on True Fire, there is a little check-in button. Uh, Seth has already hit it, so he's already been entered to win uh, a gift credit there. And so we want to make sure that everybody gets a shot to do that. We will announce um, the winners in the chat here. Eventually, we'll post it in the comments probably for the YouTube. And uh, so just another shot. If you guys want to want to take a, a shot here, check in on this video, and you get the opportunity to win a $100 gift credit to True Fire. So um, just another another bonus, and I uh, want to make sure people have a, have a chance to do that. Absolutely. I mean, this is... Uh, one of the greatest sort of promotions I've seen so far. You know, we've we've been doing it with True Fire for the past four months, it seems, and it's been one really great promo after another. And this is right at the top of the heat because, like I said, top notch gear. If you want to get into recording, this is where you want to do it. Tom, if you just real quick before we sign off, some guitar players are on here. I know, and they're saying I want to I want to do some home recording, but I'm a little nervous. Give them your 60 second elevator pitch on why they should jump into getting an Apollo and start using Luna. Um, honestly, because you don't have to mess around with microphones, you can plug straight in and you get all the sounds you kind of expected to get from your amp collection and all your pedal collection. You can interface your pedals with the Apollo and it just reacts perfectly with it. And then Luna being a, such an easy to use recording platform, very quickly you'll find you're just building four or five tracks overdubbed and it all comes to life. You've got the sound of basically the analog studios we all know and love, but with the modern convenience of being on your laptop. And it's, it's really, truly like an inspiring platform to play through. It will basically be creative for you. It's not like, oh, I need to go from guitarist to engineer brain. You can just stay in guitar brain and just make cool, inspirational things. And Luna will help do that. Absolutely. That's my elevator pitch. No, I see that. and that really kind of dovetails to the the six part z uh, series I did on True Fire's channel about uh, using Luna as a guitar player, creating tracks, not only using uh, uh, amplifier plugins, but also recording with a live microphone and using the aux to record guitar sounds as well and how to mix it all down so you can send it to the world, put it in your car, send it to your friends. <laughs> all right, yeah, uh, I think it's time to sign off. We're going to send Tom to bed. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, and, um, yeah, so here we are. Uh, this has been a great evening of really, really getting great guitar sounds with universal audio. We're crafting and, and creating some of the greatest tones you're going to get inside your computer or from your amplifier. Uh, I'm Corey Congilio. I'm a proud True Fire artist and even prouder universal audio artist and aux demonstrator from time to time. So, um, I'm going to sign off. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us. And uh, stay tuned. There's always another True Fire Live around the corner. Thanks, Corey. Thanks again, Tom. Great Thank show. You. See Thanks, you guys. Thomas. See you again.